I want to shout out everybody in Czech. I want to shout out everybody in um, Slovakia. I want to shout out everybody in Europe, straight from the US. Oh my god! All right. I know I keep banging on about 6 ix 9s 2015 music video scub life, but damn it, that video was truly the most important moment in 6 ix 9s career. And the reasons for that just keep racking up. Firstly, you know that this was the first time that he'd encouraged his viewers to rep their gang while surrounded by his scum gang outfit of renter crips. It was also one of the first music videos that he'd filmed after being bailed out on a scandalous sexual misconduct charge that would follow him around for years like a cloud of smelly prison food farts. But there is yet another reason reason why this was a significant career moment for 6 9 but can you guess why? Yes, it's because it was the first time that 6 9 actually uploaded a music video to Slovakian hip-hop YouTube platform FCK Them or Fuck Them. Yeah, cheers guys, that's gonna do wonders for the age rating of this video. Of course, getting his Scum Life video on the Fuck Them YouTube channel represented an early W for 6 9 but you'd be forgiven if you'd never even heard of Fuck Them before this point. Look, I don't know about you, but for me, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of an edgy Slovakian video website is getting your tendons slashed in a warehouse by a rich banker on vacation. But no, apparently the biggest export in Slovakia isn't the pleasant murdering of backpackers or YouTubers with murderable faces. Apparently it's clout chasing rainbow haired rappers. And Fuck Them provided the platform for Takashi69 to build an audience in Europe before he'd even set foot on an American stage. Now, Fuck Them was created by a Slovakian businessman named Yaksha, seen here smoking Slovakia's thinnest cigarette. He's been referred to as the P. Diddy of Bratislava Lava, which I gotta say is pretty fucking cool. Kind of in the same way that I aspire to be the P. Diddy of Bogna Regis. Now the company Fuck Them started life as I Love Party Production. Initially an events company turned video production outfit that Yaksha was running. And I gotta say Yaksha seemed to have a pretty good business brain, opting to make sure that when he launched I Love Party Production, it wasn't just another record label or video production company, but primarily a commercial events agency concerned first with throwing parties and bringing artists out to perform. And apparently the Fuck Them name itself was first touted when the Slovakian rap group The Haha ha Crew used it on their merch. That's funny, it's usually Kanye saying fuck you to his fans with merch. Anywho, the Ha Ha Crew are a young Slovakian outfit that got their start after getting quite a lot of attention locally off their Slovakian swag raps about luxury brands around 2013. Damn, you know you're a G when even your 40 has joined a gang. Much like a young 6 9 they were heavily influenced by early ASAP Rocky swag. Now this was really out of the ordinary for Slovakian music, and the Ha Ha Crew were considered a turning point for rap in the region. Yaksha saw the potential in the Ha Ha Crew and begun working with them under the banner of Fuck Them. Initially, the Fuck Them brand was just a movement built around the Ha Ha Crew Crew's work, but Yaksha started organizing events under this name and inviting performers both locally and from overseas to come and perform in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. And the Fuck Them label begun to release music videos for artists on the Fuck Them YouTube channel, as well as posting videos for international artists not on the label in exchange for the exclusive rights to any of their Slovakian show bookings. Frankly, this is a fire business model, and anybody living in a less musically popping nation with an interest in developing the hip hop scene there should definitely take notice. Now the Fuck Them channel went from there to host big drops for the likes of Riff Raff and I Love McConan and Gucci Mane with Rocky Luciano. In fact, it turns out that the first international single that they dropped was a track by underrated New York legend Vinnie Chase featuring French Montana, as well as the future video boss and director of the Gone Bad music video, Kid Up. Unfortunately, this song didn't blow up as it hoped and it didn't even end up getting a video. Tragic. But anyway, by this point, Fuck Them and the Ha Ha Crew were the most popping thing in Slovakian hip hop. And apparently it was the Ha Ha Crew themselves that actually found 6 9 on Instagram when he'd had less than a thousand followers. They'd actually reposted a few of his early music videos to their Facebook page. And at some point, 6 9 noticed from his YouTube analytics that he had a big following in Slovakia. Unlike me, with my measly 22,000 views from Slovakia. Come on guys, you need to rep it for the Slovakian gang gang. So seeing that, 6 9 decided to make a post asking his fans which Slovakian rappers he should be collaborating with. This led to the Ha Ha Crew connecting with 6 9 as early as 2014 via email and remotely making their first collaboration, the song Rolling Stones, that appeared on the Ha Ha Crew album VLNA. This song was actually released as audio only on the Fuck Them platform and was 6 9s first appearance on the channel. From there, Yaksha was liking 6 9s growth and his vibes, and this was why he agreed to host the original Scum Life music video on the platform. Rip 6 9 you throw it up, I don't give a fuck where you are, you throw it up! 
that one. 6 ix 9 continued posting content on the platform from there, using the channel to debut music videos for his tracks Yoke and Exodia. Apparently things were going so well that in 2016, Yaksha actually made the trip to Bushwick, Brooklyn to meet with 6 9 where apparently 6 9 actually asked Yaksha to be his manager, but was duly turned down. So they instead made a pact to get 6 9 famous in Slovakia and get his money right over in Europe, building a foundation that he could then leverage to try and get even bigger in the US. And all this was in exchange for bringing international eyeballs onto the Fuck Them brand. And eventually Yaksha made good on his promise and brought 6 9 to Slovakia to perform. He flew over to perform at the Babylon Club in Bratislava on April the 29th, 2017, as well as doing other local shows in places like Prague. Damn, last time I saw someone with colourful hair like this performing in Prague, it involved ping pong balls and a tetanus shot. Really though, those shows were lively and I gotta say it looked lit as fuck. Apparently 6 9 got a lot of love in Bratislava and this trip literally saw him doing his first live show ever, going from zero shows to a sold out headline performance of around 1500 people. Hell yeah, I did my, a European tour and shit. Oh, okay. Where I never even did a show period till my first show was in um, Prague, Czech Republic. Really? Or and was it sold crazy? Out, sold out. How many people? Two, 15, two, it was like the cap was, it was, you could look up. People don't realize just how goddamn monumental this was for 6 9 Going from literally never having performed on stage before to selling out an international venue. God damn, it looks so lit. I just wish that I could go back in a time machine and be there. In fact, rumor has it that at this show, Anytime 6 9 stage dived, if you'd have grabbed a lock of his rainbow hair, you'd have had good clout for five years. Now from there, he continued posting music videos on Fuck Them, including a collab with the Ha Ha crew, Jaguar. I've got to say, it was a wholesome affair, starting out with a scene that looked like some teenage friends going into the woods to smoke their first ever cigarette. Fuck me, I wasn't wrong. As well as probably the best improvised jersey catch I have ever seen in a music video. Oh! 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 And while there, 6 9 also learned just how different basketball is under Slovakian rules. He next used the Fuck Them YouTube channel to debut a music video for the track Zeta Zero along with famous Dex, Schlosser and Dalib from the Ha Ha Crew. That actually featured a weird opening scene where 6 9 pretends to use a mobile radio. But to be fair, after all that time in jail, I'm sure he's much better at handling knobs. Unfortunately, this famous Dex feature wouldn't be the breakthrough moment that 6 9 was really hoping for. Because as we discussed in episode 2, 6 9 never actually got permission to use the beat of this track from the producer Thrax. And because he'd gone on to join the group City Morgue with Zilla Kami and Righteous P after they fell out with 6 9 when Zeta Zero dropped, he copyright struck the video and had it taken down. But this L aside, 6 9 was in luck because in April, he dropped the song Poles 14 6 9 with Trippy Red. And that ended up becoming a huge hit, racking up over 150 million views on YouTube to this day, going gold by the start of 2018 and platinum by October of that year. Now 6 9 apparently met Trippy Red through Instagram, initially clocking him making some gangster blood comments during their Zilla Kami beef. But Trippy had commented under my post and said, yo, um, word to EK5 something, you know, some blushing. And he was like, yo, word to that, um, you think you tough or some shit. And I said, yo, um, I fuck with Trapstar. And he said, oh shit, like I fuck with your shit. And then I was, and then we just, I, I FaceTime called him. So once again, the pattern of 6 9 friendship strikes again. What begun as a potential beef led to friendship. And 6 9 ended up flying out to LA to work with Trippy Red and shooting the video for Pulse 14 6 9 with him. And they linked up again for the July the 3rd, 2017 track All We with Uno the Activist, which was a great tune, but not quite as successful as Pulse. That video had Trippy Red heating up a knife on some fire, presumably to cut through some awfully stubborn butter. Now, Trippy Red and 6 9 have a very fractured relationship. And if you're interested, I definitely recommend you go and watch my previous video that documents the entire beef between these two in detail. But long story short, Trippy Red is the one who got 6 9 plugged in with his record label, 10,000 Projects. Now this company was started by a young man named Elliot Grange. And if you've watched many of 6 9s interviews, his name might be familiar. I am Santa Elliot Grange. Interestingly, Trippy Red was always very secretive about the deal that he'd supposedly signed with Elliot Grange between 2016 and 2017. Are you signed? Sorta, of, kinda. What does that Maybe. mean these days? I heard you were. I got some little shit going on. Okay. There's some little shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And this is actually part of a long running trend in the music industry, where even artists who sign lucrative deals to major labels still want to give off that underdog appearance of being an independent artist. Now on the one hand, an artist might just completely lie about the deal that they've gotten, hence the term industry plant, or it might be a kind of in-between agreement where the artist remains independent and owns their music, but partners up with a major record label for some distribution. Now look, we don't know the specifics of Trippy or 6 ix deal, but at least Trippy eventually spilled the beans on how this arrangement with Elliot Grange first came about. How did you meet Elliot? 
Because he's kind of like royalty, right? Like, Shit, we just ended up sitting down and having a drink. It was on some shit like that. He wanted to meet me. What What made you fuck with him? Because I'm sure there was a yeah, fuck sure, like, ton of Alamo and everyone else probably was coming out. Like, what made you go with him? <laughs> that shouldn't even be a question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there was clear appeal to signing to Elliot Grange, but it wasn't his long-running months of experience in the record industry, being that he was only born in 1993, making him to this day only 26 years old. Pfft, I mean, what? A 26-year-old thinking they know shit about the music industry? Oh, no! No, the reason these guys all want to work with Elliot is because who his dad is. That's right, Lucian Grange, aka the CEO of Universal Music Group, aka the guy that steals everyone's money on YouTube, aka frequent number one slot holder on Billboard's Power 100 list. Hey, maybe I'd be on that list if making fart jokes about famous musicians counted as influence. But yeah, so if your dad is quite literally the doctor evil of the record industry, you're pretty set. People can overlook your lack of experience, charisma, absence of any significant publicity whatsoever, or fact that you've never developed a single successful artist because of who your pops is. Because your pops has got it covered. And Elliot Grange truly grew up with the gilded life of somebody whose dad runs the record industry. Apparently for his 13th birthday and bar mitzvah, Lucian Grange hired out the entire of Nobu and had Take That play a private show just for his son. But apparently being born on Easy Street with a bust down silver spoon in his mouth wasn't quite enough for young Elliot. Apparently he made a lot of money in university through spread betting and finessing his taxes by declaring that as gambling winnings. And then fresh out of university, he founded his own record label, Strange Music. You know, strange, because it's spelt like his name, Grange before being duly sued by Tech 9 and his original record label, Strange Music, and being forced to change the name of the company to 10,000 Projects. Because of course, what screams I'm a hip hop industry expert more than not knowing who Tech 9 is? Elliot landed a distribution deal for his newly founded label through UMG's Caroline, which I assume was not easy to get. I mean, I bet he asked his dad really nicely. And since blowing up, Elliot has become notoriously secret about his business. But I mean, if I had a business that had directly profited from and encouraged the fall of one of the most violent criminal organizations New York has ever seen, I'd probably keep a low profile too. Bet that protection budget's hitting differently in 2019, eh, Elliot? And so on August 24th, 2017, Trippy Red officially signs to Elliot Grange's label with the assistance of Coach K from QC as his management and releases the first edition of his iconic Love Letter to You series under the Strange Music 10,000 Projects banner. Now, apparently after the success of the songs Poles and Ooh Wee with 6 9 Trippy Red brought him to Elliot to get a deal and apparently even received a finder's fee. However, as you know, Later in 2017, after Zillakami exposed 6 ix 9 for his underage sex scandal, Trippy Red begun not only distancing himself from 6 ix 9 but also airing out details of his record deal and the finder's fee that he'd received for bringing 6 ix 9 to Elliot's label. I'm signed to Elliot Grange. If you don't know who that is, that's the nigga that owned Universal Sun, okay? I'm signed to him and his label is Strange Music. You are not signed to Strange Music. In fact, you got a deal for 30 bands, and I made 5K off of that, because I got you your deal. Unfortunately for Trippy, he'd already created a monster. 6 ix buzz was at an all-time high since the song Poles dropped, and only a few days after that song OE released, a picture of his new forehead tattoo went completely viral on Instagram and Reddit and cemented his place as one of the wildest personalities to watch on social media. And apparently he got this tattoo partly to get attention and clout and just partly to cover up his terrible acne. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I gotta get rid of these pimples because I hate the comments like, yo, <laughs> clean your You get face. that a lot? Yeah, hell yeah. So they like, yo, clean your face. I'm just like, yo, what if I put a 6 9 over this fucking acne? Shit, bro, I didn't realize you could cure acne with tattoos. I'm finna get that TLR forehead tat stat. Now this groundbreaking breaking head tattoo moment caused a flurry of opportunities to come 6 ix way, including a prestigious interview with the coolest podcast in the world, No Jumper, in July 2017. Today, we got Takashi 6 9 in this bitch. How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? You know that shit. Takashi 6 9 Now, in the wake of his sexual misconduct scandal being exposed by Zillakami and Trippy Red, 6 9 kind of took a few months out of the limelight whilst the dust settled on that situation. Apparently, at this point, the label were losing interest in him and weren't really gearing up to promote any of his songs. But rather than throw on a neck brace and try to Weinstein it out, he decided to go it alone and not even wait for a producer or label to be ready. He would just take a Pierre Bourne beat meant for Trippy Red and record the song that would end up being the biggest moment of his career. Gummo, baby. On October the 8th, 2017, 6 ix 9 releases the music video for the song Gummo on the Fuck Them YouTube channel and shit goes bananas. 
The song was named after the movie Gummo by Harmony Korine, which 6 9 is a fan of. Yet another hint towards his early love of filmmaking. And Gummo was a runaway success on YouTube, racking up 28 million views and 3 million spins on Spotify within a month and ending up on the prestigious Rap Caviar playlist. Now the music video famously featured a whole gang of Nine Trey Bloods, and this video actually represented the first time in his career that 6 9 had publicly repped the Bloods, and the beginning of the trials and tribulations that he would be facing with Shotty, Treyway, and the Nine Trey Bloods, which we will be getting into later on, baby. Now the music video seemingly took place at the most intimidating barbecue I have ever seen. I believe this barbecue was BYOB, Bring Your Own Bloods. Not sure you got enough weed there, Takashi. Leave some psychosis for the rest of us. Oh, and the weed is a phone too. Smart. Smart. Anyway, the track was huge. It got remixes from the likes of Lil Wayne, Offset, and Rick Ross. It racked up over 100 million streams on SoundCloud and was the top streamed track there for December 2017 and January 2018. To this day, it's got over 350 million views on YouTube. And by December 2017, it had slipped in on the Billboard charts at number 58 before rising to its peak at number 12. And the track went double platinum, but not everyone was loving it. Apparently, the producer Pierre Bourne had originally intended for the beat to be used by Trippy Red, who passed it on to 6 ix 9 Before that song was released on Apple Music, we went through so much back and forth of no's that a no turned into a yes. Mm. I was in Australia, bro. I didn't say, I never said yes. And apparently, Pierre Bourne hadn't actually given 6 9 permission to release the song, despite 6 9s attempts to contact him. Before I hopped on it, I sent it out to Pierre, I DM'd him and all that. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm releasing a song to this. I, I hope we could get it cleared. Never got back to me, so I left it to the executives. I left it up to the lawyers and all that shit. And apparently his lawyers made him take the beat tag off. Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? Uh, no, you don't. Okay, all right, Pierre, no worries. But regardless of the hate, the runaway success of Gummo was huge for 6 9 He called this the song that changed his life and the moment that he had been praying for. Every day while walking Titus, and I would be like, God, please change my life. Please change my life. I'm a good kid. Please change my life. Like I'm, I got, a, I got a baby. I can't even buy Pampers. Please change my life. Please change my life. Please change my life. Please change my life. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. That's so sweet. And then Gumbo, Gumbo came and life changed. And to be fair, 6 9 had been putting in work for a long ass time. He'd started trying to get famous with clothes in 2013. He started rapping, releasing his first ever song 6 9 in 2014. And it would take him a whole three years from that first music video that he put out to hit the big time with Gummo, but he was finally lit, baby. Money was rolling in, he had sidestepped his underage sex scandal, and he was on his way to the top. Apparently his label were even baffled with how lit he had managed to get himself. And the label called my manager and said and told him like, yo, how the fuck this shit is doing this many numbers? Yeah. He's like, yo, this shit is gonna be huge. And he said that him and Trife Drew's formula for success was finally working. I just had a formula, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. me, and my, me and my right hand, Trife Drew, had a formula coming into this. And I guess that that formula was rock solid because after Gummo, all the way through 2018, he released hit after hit and completely dominated the Billboard charts. Once Gummo took off, 6 9 was away and he had one of the most spectacular runs on the Billboard charts that we have seen in recent hip hop history. The follow up to Gummo called Cuda dropped on December 3rd, 2017. Just in time to piggyback off of the momentum of Gummo the same month that it would storm the Billboard charts. And it seemed at this point 6 9 had learned a lot and his formula was in full effect. Well, I guess he learned everything except for how to hold a Tech 9 properly. The track ended up debuting at number 50 on Billboard, going platinum and even hitting number 95 in his second home country of Slovakia. The track was actually named after Kuda B, one of 6 ix close friends, and the same guy who ended up getting snitched on for the Chief Keef Times Square contract shooting, which we will be discussing later. Now, interestingly, 6 9 was posting his music videos all the way up to Gummo on the Fuck Them YouTube channel. But with Kuda, he started posting his music videos on World Stars channel, and his views went to a whole nother level. But don't get it twisted, there was no bad blood between 6 9 and Fuck Them, and even when he was sitting in jail, Yaksha had nothing but kind words for 6 9 And he even appeared in a music video for the Ha Ha crew all the way at the end of 2018, just before his arrest. But from there, 6 9 did not let up and he continued a strategy of continuing to release new songs while his other ones were picking up steam. So around a month later on January 14th, he released the song Kiki with some impressive co-signs from Fetty Wap, 
and A Boogie. This song actually featured some very innovative production methods instead of using traditional hip hop 808 drums. The drums of this song were actually played on the butt cheeks of Pooh Bush with Thotties. This track ended up peaking at 43 on the Billboard charts and going gold. And the momentum of these tracks culminated in the release of the first official studio project from 6 9 the Day 6 9 mixtape. Dropping on February 23rd, 2018, the project featured tracks with big name appearances from the likes of Tory Lanez and Young Thug on the track Rondo and Offset on that original remix of Gummo. And that project did very well, landing at number four on the Billboard Albums charts, charting in over a dozen international countries and going gold in the US. And this was a big W, but 6 9 was not done there. He continued shooting videos for tracks on the album non-stop. Within a week, the video for the song Billy dropped, going number 50 on Billboard and going gold, a track which featured an an intimidating and incriminating intro from our boy Shotty. As well as having so many bloods in the video, it looked like 6 9 had activated the Spawn Unlimited Bloods cheat. Yeah, let's let these guys in the industry, sounds good. By the end of the month, 6 9 had landed a prestigious Breakfast Club appearance, which was legendary for having an enormous view count and Encouraged by 6 ix no fucks given attitude, unrestrained braggery, and ability to command the room like very few people had before. As well as beginning the long running trend of saying that he is X for X on Billboard. First you know every you song know. I put out since Gummo is charted. I know. Every song. Every song. Obviously, whatever I'm doing is working. Nah, not when it comes to all that beef shit, man. I'm listen, telling you. You don't got listen, no Billboard famous, records. Famous and, last and listen, words. Listen, you don't got, listen, last, listen, 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 you yes. don't got no Billboard records. Yeah, because I got a nationally syndicated listen, radio show. You don't got show. no Billboard records. I got a nationally listen. syndicated radio show. I got a New York Times bestselling book. I've had hit okay. TV shows. I executive produce a lot of TV shows. I got movies coming out. To be honest, out. if it wasn't for this, I would have never heard about you. But let's not forget, it wasn't all W's for 6 9 over this period. A few days later, his double XL freshman pitch emerged, but they ended up dubbing him and leaving him off the list. I'm Takai 6 9 and this is why I deserve to be a 2018 XXL freshman. Apparently, despite having the most viewed pitch of the batch, for some reason his video was temporarily taken down and he never made the cover. I've been watching, you know, the XXL pitch. I'm leading, I'm leading the whole fucking shit. Everyone knows that shit is like, like my my pitch out of all pitches come down. I'm leading it by margin, like 500,000. I think I'm the only pitch right now with a million views. But he didn't let that double XL size L hold him back. A month later, he would release the soft crooning song Gotti, a solo feature of a track 6 9 had done with a guy called Pac Man called Got It Got It. This is probably my favorite 6 9 song. The video featured the most peng selection of double C thick video thotties I have seen in a long time, including the most sexy model of them all, 6 9 God, I just got the most confused boner ever. How has this guy got the hottest bars in the game and also the nicest cat? And bizarrely, the second half of the music video was literally just him walking around in Dominican Republic, handing out $100 bills to random people. This was another big song and narrowly managed to slip in at number 99 on the Billboard charts and weirdly number 95 on the UK singles charts. This was really a change in direction for him, showing a much more soft, singing style of performance. He also bizarrely pretended to be in jail during the lead up to this song to try and drum up an extra buzz before revealing that it was all cap. Yeah, I wish I was in jail, right? <laughs> you big dummy. Careful what you wish for there, chum. By May, he dropped the first track that ended up appearing on his ill-fated Dummy Boy album, Tati. At this point, 6 9 is so thugged out that even his fucking car is a blood. I assume that same vehicle is set to make an appearance in Transformers Compton Edition. This track ended up peaking at number 46 on Billboard, making him 7 for 7. Now, Tati was nothing like Gotti and was very much a return to his crazy, hardcore rap style. It also featured a lot of thotties like his old videos, but also a healthy dosage of goons. Now, some have said that Tati was named after a stripper in Starlets, which is where some scenes of the video were filmed, but others have pointed out that Tati is actually the name of an eight-year-old girl suffering from cancer who 6 9 took on a shopping trip as part of a Make-A-Wish program. And of course, ironically, the song had him dissing people for snitching. <laughs> However, at this point, 6 9 takes a little bit of time out before the release of his debut album to fly around the world and secure that bag. Look, like most people at this point, everybody is completely tired of 6 9 winning. And frankly, I'm tired of trying to come up with mean stuff to say about him. So let's take a short break from the up and look at the return to his European second home, Slovakia. 
Now, 6 ix 9 announced his world domination tour for the summer of 2018. The tour would run from June 15 to July the 6th all over Europe. Now, 6 ix 9 was actually banned from performing at a bunch of venues in the US due to a whole host of beasts that he'd been having that we're going to cover later on. But basically, it was just easier for him to go over to Europe and get that bag touring than it was in America. After all, his songs and albums were charting all over Europe since he'd got his start building his fan base in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. The plan was to start in Slovakia and then go through the UK, Germany, Amsterdam, several other European countries and end up in Belgium. And this is actually the famous trip where 6 ix 9 was seen on social media running around with an AK in his pantaloons. If you ask me, he looks like he popped molly like a wheelie. As expected, this tour was well organized and documented by Yaksha of Fuck Them. It's like my manager, my best friend, one of the good and there's a handful of amazing behind the scenes tour documentaries on the Fuck Them YouTube channel which are well worth your time. You get to see some tour shenanigans where 6 9 pretended to be cucked in a hotel room, continuing his efforts to constantly go viral on Instagram like a less acne ridden Supreme Patty. Now unfortunately 6 9 was actually denied entry into London and the show was cancelled. For all my fans in London, Manchester, in the UK, I want to send an apology for not being able to enter for the show. But 6 ix 9 still showed love to an avid British fan who got caught skipping work in order to catch 6 ix 9s show in Barcelona and ended up losing his job. It is unfortunate that we have to let you go after being with us for 12 years. The reasons are the following. You have taken a week off due to reasons of family wedding. However, we have Monterey and social media and the fact that you're taking off a week to see 6 ix 9 <laughs> But shenanigans aside, 6 ix 9 was playing big, high energy shows and clearly get into that bag. In fact, while in France, he shot a music video with French rapper Le Crim, and that track, Bloody, ended up hitting number 11 on the French charts and number 17 on the Belgian charts when it released a year later whilst he was in prison. In fact, 6 9 was making so much cash in Europe that between takes on that music video with Le Crim, he decided to flex by throwing a whole bunch of euros on the floor from a Philip Pleen bag. Y'all niggas keep your dollars, you heard? This is the king of Europe. Keep that king of New York shit, you heard? It's real shit. Real spill. Oh, what a long way humble Danny Hernandez has come from originally saying that he would never rock designer clothes to this. You never see Takai 69 in no babe. You cannot find no picture of me ever in no name brand clothes. Oh, yeah. I dare you to get the Gucci hat and the Gucci shirt. Yo, yo, bro, yo, bro, yo, bro, who am I? Who am I? And listen, it wasn't just 6 ix 9s wardrobe that was popping off to 2018. When he came back from tour, he took things up a notch and begun working on AAA releases. The first of which was the huge banger Fifi, alongside the more bitter, less humble and less charismatic Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. In the video, they got cozy playing patty cake, and Nicki Minaj spat her verse in a to-scale model of her own hand wallet. God, Kenneth Petty is a brave man. Not only was this a career high for 6 9 landing his highest charting single to date, coming in at number 4 on Billboard before rising to number 3, but this track went on to go octuple platinum, as well as being a top 10 hit in Australia. Hungary, Canada, New Zealand, Sweden, and Switzerland. And it went top 20 in Australia, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, and the jolly old UK. And I know that 6 9 has a habit of screwing everybody over, but he really put on for his day one homie, Trife Drew, and his figure eight production company who he let make that music video for Fifi with Nicki Minaj. Shame loads of it was out of focus then. Can we get a focus puller on the set, please? Hey, that's what happens when Drew doesn't film it. If Drew didn't film it, then it ain't filmed right. Right, so boom, now he's eight for eight on Bill. Board. Nicki Minaj even added that song to her Queen album to try and help her flagging numbers after she was famously beaten to the number one slot by Travis Scott. However, to drum up controversy and intrigue, once again, 6 9 teased on social media that he would be going to jail forever. Not really one for the vision board, is it, Danny? He was likely capitalizing on renewed interest and backlash about his sexual misconduct case in the midst of his re-sentencing and the attention that he was getting from his ongoing Billboard success. Nicki Minaj actually also faced pressure to distance herself from Danny due to these charges but she didn't cave instead choosing to defend him. But hey, after all, mistreatment of minors is pretty familiar to her. And whilst Fifi stormed the charts, 6 9 continued to do big features and continued his strategy of working with international rappers to get clout abroad. He appeared on the song Gigi, Skittles, I know what Skittles is, with German rapper Gringo, landing him a top 
10 hit in Germany. And then appearing on Get the Strap with 50 Cent, who had become something of a clout mentor to 6ix9ine during his come up, after 6ix9ine went viral for replicating the In The Club video on a shoestring budget. Apparently, 50 Cent was so impressed with 6ix9ine that he decided to gift him a bust down inhaler filled with his own farts. And 6ix9ine duly returned the favor by providing his own car for the Get The Strap video. And 6ix9ine continued his international finesse by doing the Spanish language track BB with Anuel AA. This track featured a sizzling selection of video thotties that are so hot, I wasn't surprised that 6ix9ine had to perform his verse half submerged in water, most likely to hide his colorful raging semi. Hey, it beats a pillow on your lap. Now, BB hit 30 on Billboard, but more importantly, it went number one in Spain and number one on the Billboard Hot Latin Tracks chart. And to this day on YouTube, it has close to a billion views, which means that this song probably had a bigger global reach than Fifi with Nicki, but just didn't get the same US chart certification success. And this was actually Anuel AA's first Billboard chart entry in the US, setting the stage for his latest success on Uptown Vibes with Meek Mill and Marla on 6 ix Dummy Boy album that didn't get a video. And he kept those international vibes going, making the track All Those Reloaded with French dance producer Vladimir Kochma racking up 38 million views on YouTube. But my god, young 6 9 was just not done winning. Because in October, he dropped the Take Heath produced banger, stupid! And this song had everything. A catchphrase, a fire beat, a verse from Bobby Shmurda recorded from jail. Hell, he even shot the music video in Dubai in a 6 9 car that he borrowed from Mo Vlogs. In case you don't already follow me on Instagram, me and my sister uploaded a stupid challenge video with the Ferrari. I guess 6 9 liked it and he's coming to our house. He finna smash your sister, bro. Hell, he even had Mo Vlogs and his sister shouting Treyway on some gang shit. Treyway, free Bobby Shmurda, free Riding Rebel, Yo. free the whole nine, free the GS9, you know that. Treyway. Certified, guys. All right, I'm out. We're hot, guys. That's the day. Treyway! Treyway. <laughs> Damn, last time I saw three people with such suspicious sources of income in the same place, I was at a Firefest board meeting. Anyway, Stupid hit number 25 on the Billboard charts and went platinum. Then he had a track called Kick with Jamillion that went number two in Denmark. Then he had International Gangsters with Farid Bang and Capo and SCH. Then he worked with a Dutch rapper called Rari on the track Buzo. After shot, he met this dude whilst partying in Amsterdam and they ended up recording this song together in Dubai. And so by the time he found himself on The Breakfast Club for the second time in November, he was goddamn 10 for 10 on the Billboard charts. 10 for 10, 10, that's a lot. I'm, right now I'm 10 for 10. 10 for 10. 10 for 10 on the Billboard. And I got a project dropping November 23rd called Dummy Boy. And so 6 ix 9 spectacular run on the Billboard charts in 2018 truly hits the crescendo point on November the 27th when he releases his debut studio album Dummy Boy, sending fans wild with the fact that it has two Kanye West features on it, something fans had been fiending to hear ever since they were spotted together in the studio in September. Dummy Boy landed at number two on the Billboard charts and moved 66,000 units, but there was one big problem with the success of this album. When it dropped, 6 9 was sitting in jail, facing charges of armed robbery, conspiracy to commit murder and drug trafficking, all as part of his association with the Nine Trey Gangster Bloods. That's right, people, it is fucking Trey Way. And now look, I personally love 6 9s music, and you have to give him credit for the spectacular run that he had on the Billboard charts in 2018. However, we all know that a big part of the reason that he was so popping during this period was due to his extracurricular shenanigans. Once he found fame and musical success, he made every effort to rub it in people's faces, starting countless beefs and constantly telling people to suck his dick. A lot of big talk for a little rainbow-headed pipsqueak. So in the next episode of The Clout Chronicles, we'll be taking a closer look at Shotty, Treyway, and the Nine Trey Bloods. The gang that held 6 9 down during his spectacular come up and gave him the muscle that he felt he needed to act untouchable and start feuds with everyone in the rap game. Shout out to my Patreon gang! Big Sean Anderson, your boy Javier Gonzalez, Monique Vivret McKay, DJ Fred 100, Henrik, Henry Bryant, Josh Knappin, Naraj Shukla, Galib, Chris J and Dylan Stuba. You guys are legends. Thank you so much for supporting. You make this all possible. Thank you to everybody else who has their name in the comments that you can see now. Make sure that you support your boy at patreon.com slash traplawross. Cop the merch at traplaw.com and follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at traplawross. Gang, gang, thank you for your support. And until next time, peace out.